All right, first and foremost, I want to give all the honours and the praises and the glory belongs to my Lord and Saviour, whose name is Yahweh, Ahasham, Yahweh Shai, Ahasham, Waha Makar Kodash. The name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. Son's name is Yahweh Shai, in whom I reverence. And honours to the apostles that have in the Holy Spirit and to the hopeful elect across the globe and to the few, the very few brothers and sisters that are listening and also learning in the hopes of being saved within these last days. All right. This lesson is going to be based on the serpent, right, regarding Eve and the knowledge of good and evil, right, and Lord willing this will be edifying. I'm going to try and make it as um, simple as possible. For those that are listening and learning, we're going to start off on Genesis, Baba Kisha. We're going to go to Genesis 2, and we're going to jump straight to verse 2 and start chapter 2. Right? There's quite a lot. You know what? We go to verse 16. Right. Go to verse 15. And the Lord Jehovah power took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. Okay. So husband me was way, way, way back. Husband me farming, toiling. Okay. And the Lord power commanded the man saying, Of every tree of the garden, thou mayest freely eat. Right? Why? Because it was only good, right? And it was the, what the fruit of what wisdom. Verse 17, but of the tree of knowledge of good. Key thing. The tree of knowledge of good and evil. Thou shalt not eat of it. For in that day that eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. So they were warned, all right? Adam was warned not to eat the tree of good and evil. Because we only prior to that we only knew good. He was directed to only eat what that tree, the may mayest free, mayest freely eat every tree of the garden, which is good. Verse 18. But well, still, still on verse 17. In that day that thou eatest, thou therefore shalt surely die. That was the beginning of sin. And we're gonna go into it. Okay. Thou shalt surely die. Because we wasn't dying pr prior to that. We were living as gods. And the Lord Jehovah thy power. It is not good. And the Lord Jehovah power thy said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a help meet for him. And then what is a help meet going to? When you have a wife, a woman, she's supposed to be a help meet. Right? That's what she's supposed to be. Esau will teach you differently. Right? Verse 19, now of the ground the Lord Jehovah power formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto the Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. So even the names of the animals today, who named them? Adam. And Adam gave names to all the cattle and to the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam there was not found a help meet for him. Right? The wife and the Lord power caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam and he slept and he took one of his ribs right and when you go into that word rib what does it mean right when someone says this is my rib your relative okay your relative you may have a niece nephew right okay a side piece right and closed up the flesh and said thereof and the rib which the Lord power had taken from the man made he a woman, right? The lesser. And the woman is lesser than the man. So the rib is associated with what? The woman, right? And brought her unto man. And Adam said, This now bone of my bones, flesh of my flesh, right? And his spiritual as well, because it says, War man. Because the woman came out of the man, okay? And Adam said, this is now the bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man, which was what? The rib. 
Found Kay the rib is associated with a woman. Therefore shall a man leave his father and mother and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh what united. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. Okay. Now the serpent, and this is prior to them because they again they were oh, they only knew of good, they never ate that fruit of what evil. Now we're on chapter three, we're gonna to get to the point. Now the serpent was more subtle than any, any beast of the field, right? And when you go into this word serpent, check this out. Check this out. Quickly get this word serpent and see what comes up. Now we're going to switch it up. Sometimes you have to get the dictionary. All right, we're going to switch up the way we do things. Let's go to serpent. see what comes up if you excuse me just a minute um serpent 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 where is it where is it where is it so lucky i usually am a bit more sharper than this what is this see if we can find it The PR serpent. For some reason, it ain't here. I had it, but it ain't here. But when you go into the serpent, you know what a serpent is. A serpent is like an antique, what a snake, right? So this individual had snake characteristics. Okay. Oh, here it is. Snake, large snake, figuratively a treacherous person. Right, so you call someone a serpent, and even John the Baptist, when them Pharisees came to his baptism, he called them serpents. They were treacherous. They were snaky. Right. See, so there's two. Uh, look, a snake, because Yahweh also said to the disciples, Matthew ten and sixteen, "Be wise as serpents, harmless as doves." But he said, "Be wise as serpent." He didn't say be evil as a serpent. Right. But this serpent was what we know a witch, a warlock. And it was a man. It wasn't a snake. And no, it's not impossible for the Heavenly Father to make a snake talk. Right? At all. Okay? But this serpent is characteristic of a man upon earth. Right? And that man is Esau today. Those that call themselves so-called white people. Right? Now the serpent was more subtle, sneaky, crafty. And you study snakes, they're very crafty. One of the most craftiest animals is what a snake. Than any beast of the field, than any other nation. And Esau is more crafty than any other nation which the Lord Power had made. Right? And he said unto the woman, Yeah, as the most I said, you shall not eat every tree of the garden. Right? So again, that was what? That temptation, and it was a temptation, right? Yeah, have the most I said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Did he really tell you that? And the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. But that was only what good. But of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, the most I have said, you shall not eat of it. There was a reason why. The most I said that he didn't say it for any old reason. There was a reason behind it because it wasn't good. Right? That fruit wasn't good. That fruit was wicked. The fruit was a philosophies. Right? Witchcraft. Everything that was evil. The most I have said, you shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest ye die. So we also know what it was associated with what? The ways of sin. Because then it wouldn't say, lest you die. And the serpent said unto the woman, you shall not surely die. Here we go. And you know what's so, you know what's so spiritual. You know what's so spiritual. When you read Matthew's 4, it's that same devil. It's that same devil. It's that same serpent. And the serpent said unto the woman, you shall, you shall surely, you shall not surely die. Right? 
See, the devil's very, very crafty. He will convince you something's good when it's really bad. And that's his job. And the serpent said to the woman, you shall not surely die. You're not going to die. You'll be fine. But the most high doth not doth know that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened. Right? Which, it was true. Right? Because now what? Her, our eyes have been opened up to what? And you shall be as gods. Right? But no, no, no. That, that was a lie because we were already as gods. This is knowing good and evil. So it says you would know both sides, good and evil. Right? And what was the good? Because prior to that, we only knew good. And it says and evil. We never knew evil prior to that. Once that tree was what et, and that tree represents the philosophies. More verse 6. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, all right? Food for what? Food for thought. And I, you know one thing I noticed? Most women, not all, most women are into what? Astrology, Scientology. That's that, that's that same food, right? And that it was pleasant to the eyes and the tree to be desired to make one wise. Of course it was pleasant. But just because it's pleasant to the eyes, it doesn't mean it's always good, right? And women, they're more... Um, carnal it's a fact they're more carnal they go off fleshly things and the tree to be desired to make one wire she took of the fruit thereof and did eat so it says it and did eat right you got stuck in spiritually she was devouring the philosophies of what evil right and gave also unto her husband so her husband was delving into what the left hand side as well with her and he did eat right and the eyes of them both were opened and they knew that they were naked how did they know how did they know they were naked right because they ate that fruit fruit of evil and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons to try to cover up their nakedness their shame that nakedness represents what shame right and bear me just a just a minute Something in Habakkuk as well. We're going to go to that. And they heard the voice of the Lord power walking in the garden in the cool. Right? Of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord power among the trees of the garden. It was not actual trees that they were hiding among. They were hiding among the nations. The nations are like an unto trees. Right? So they were hiding among the nations. Our people do that today. Try to delve in, hide in with the nations, keep their customs. Blending, right? So how were they hiding one nation? Blending through the philosophies. And the Lord power called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? 1 verse 10. And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden. And I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. Right? Why was he afraid? And he said he was naked and he hid himself. Right? That was that shame. That was that. He was convicted. Right? In his own conscience, he said, who told thee that thou was naked? Has thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee, thou shouldest not eat? And the man said, the woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. So he basically blamed the woman. And it was true. She did. right? But he followed after his woman. And the Lord Power said unto the woman, what is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, the serpent beguiled me and I did eat. Right? S serpent tricked, tricked her. The devil tricked her and I did eat. And the Lord Power said unto the serpent, because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, above the other nations and above every beast of the field. Because the other nations are also known as what? Beasts. Upon thy belly thou shalt go and thou shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And that was spiritual because what happened later on? Esau, what came out of the caves, absorbed up on his belly like a dog, grunting. It tells you that in Job 30. Right? He was in a low, low, degradative state. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. Right? And it shall bruise thy head, and it shall bruise his heel. This is later on when you had what's it, Jacob? What's it, what's it, what's it, what's it? Esau and Jacob fighting in the womb. It shall, it shall bruise thy head. Remember they were fighting and who came up first? 
Esau. Right? And bruise his heel. They were kicking against each other. They shall bruise his head. Okay? Jacob's head was being <laughs> Jacob's head was being kicked. Right? By what Esau. And who came up first? Esau. Remember it says Esau is the end of the world. Jacob is the beginning of it. That following. And unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply that sort of conception. This, this even goes into why women have birth pains when they give birth. Because prior to that, it was supposed to be a pleasurable thing, giving birth. Right? And, and so that shall bring forth children in pain. What happens when women bring forth children? They're screaming. And the desire shall be to the husband, and he shall rule over thee. Okay? And he shall rule over thee. Right? And that's the way it is. That's the order. So now we went to that. There's a lot of things to go into that goes into that sums up the whole synonymous of why we're in this condition today. And it goes into what the tricks of the devil. Right? This thing is serious. This thing is spiritual. Right? The devil's always been trying to one up Yahabashai, Yahab the Heavenly Father. And this is where we fell short. And this is why we're in the condition we are in today. So now we went to that. I want to make sure I'm getting everything. Make sure we don't miss nothing out. Let's go to Timothy's. And let's go to Corinthians as well. 11. This is a lesson I've really, really been um, pondering upon. Right? The knowledge of good and evil. Right? So let's go to 2 Corinthians 11. Let's see if it's there. Alright, this is 2 Corinthians 11 and 3. But I fear this by any means. This is Paul speaking. At the serpent beguiled Eve. So what was what so Paul knew of Genesis? He obviously read Genesis, that account where Eve was beguiled, where Eve was what tricked. But I fear lest by any means the serpent beguiled Eve. What does beguile mean? To deceive, to trick, to lay a snare, right? To cause a stumble. Okay. Beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Mashiach. Because the devil would try to make something that's so simple seem complicated. That's how the devil operates, right? That's how we operate. Something that's so simple, he'll make it seem very, 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 very complicated. When the scriptures talk about the simplicity in Yahabashai. So we went to that. And now we're going to go to Timothy's. Right on it. This is 1 Timothy's 2 and 13. For Adam was first formed, right? Created. Rent Eve. Okay. And Adam was not deceived. But the woman being deceived was in transgression. Sin. And that's why the scripture, I forgot where it is, it says, through her we all die. Through her. Through her sin. And yeah, the, it's a fact. This shows you the woman. The woman is the weaker vessel, right? The woman is the, and that's why Esau. Who did he go to? He goes to the woman first. He attacks the woman, right? He feeds her with all this rubbish. And we're not. We're not. It's not a thing when we're blaming. <laughs> we're not blaming the woman. It's nothing like that. But the scriptures are very clear and to the point and concise, right? Because the woman's more vulnerable. Okay. So now we went to that, Baba Kasha. Make sure I'm not missing anything concerning this lesson, because sometimes I'm certain things I miss. So we went to that. Is there anything else? Revelations as well. Kasha. Well, that's that same serpent, man. Right, and it's it's the same thing today. Our, our women, they believe in Esau. What Esau's got to offer, even the separation of their households. Taking the man out of the household. Who do you think set that up? You just think, oh no, it's just a coincidence. The devil set that up. To break up the households. Because they know, well, if we can get the woman to take the man out of the household, we can compl completely destroy it. The scripture says in Mark, I 
forgot whether there's something in the mark. A house divided against itself shall not stand. So Esau knows this. Esau has been studied. The devil knows this. Let's break, break up the household. Right? And that's that's what they that's what they've done. That's why everywhere you go, not just in the states, everywhere you go, most not all, not all, but look at most Jake families. We're not talking about Jake Jacob. What is it? Most of it is single parent households. That's a fact. Single parent households, and what very dysfunctional. Do you think that's by chance? And it is part of the curse. We know it's part of the curses, but you got to look at the bigger picture. Esau, Esau is responsible for that Taking a woman, that, that was a plan Taking a woman out of the house Saying you don't need the man, I'm an in, independent lady All that rubbish, that feminist bullshit Which goes back to the serpent You can do it by yourself You're an independent woman You don't need no man Oh, that's going to that's gonna change In Jacob's trouble, that's going to be changed Scripture, seven women shall what desire to take hold of one man All that was fed by the serpent Right. Even the agenda. He's really done a number on our people. But the righteous, right? Those that are coming back to this truth, they're gonna what wake up. Right? The humble, should I more say, they're gonna wake up to this truth. The elect, they're gonna wake up to this truth. So let's go back to revelations now. This is this, this very is a very, very vast topic. Revelations. I think it's 20. This is Revelation 20. And I saw another angel come down from heaven, having a key at the bottom of his pit, and a great chain in his hand. That angel was Yahweh Shai. Right? And a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon. Dragon, red ferocity. What do you think of? Right? Esau, the red man. Right? The old serpent. This is the old serpent going back to what? Genesis, which is the devil. The scriptures are very, very, very precise. And yes, this is a man on earth. You, yeah, we know you have the spiritual demon, Satan. But you have you have children of the devil. Okay? Which are the so-called white people today. Which is the devil and Satan and bound him a thousand years. And this was during um, the time of what? Byzantine. Right? Okay, the Byzantine Empire, and even the Holy Roman Empire, right? Cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal up on him that he should deceive the nations no more, because that's what the devil was doing, deceiving the nations. Till the thousand years be fulfilled, and after that he must be loosed a little season. So that was during what? I can't give you the exact date, but I know it's during what? The Byzantine Empire, all the way up to what? He really got back into power, what, 16, not even that, 17, really, really got into 1800s. That's when he was fully, 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 fully established. So that's, you count that up of what? It's nearly, what, a thousand years? Somewhat. Okay. So we went to that. That is the serpent. The scriptures in that identify you, who the serpent is. The devil doesn't want you to know he's a devil. That's why he hires, that's what you got to do. He has to do all this tricky stuff. Right? But the men of the Lord know who the devil is. And yeah, it's Esau, but guess what? As worse as that, you even got our own people, Yahweh said it in John 10 and 10, that act like the devil as well. Right? That act just like the devil. Let's go to. I want to go to Habakkuk. And um, a lot of people are saying, Mod, are you sure you want to do this lesson? It's a bit. It's a bit deep, yeah, but you can get a deep lesson and if you have the skills to make it simple as possible, you can. Because our people need to know. Let's go to Habakkuk. See if we can find it. The devil thinks he's equal. This is the thing, the devil thinks he's equal to the most high. He's not equal. He's not an equal. He's not equal to Yahweh Shai. He's a lesser. But he wants to convince you he has the same power as yet. No, he doesn't. Right? He just deals with tricks. He gives you that illusion that he has that power. 
What does he give you? He gives you a suggestion. And that's what was brought before Eve. It was a, it was a suggestion. Right? She was tricked. She was beguiled. Right? And what did Adam do? Adam followed along. And now let's go to Habakkuk, Babakash, Shah, Babakash, Shah. Particular scripture I was looking for. Check this out, check this out, check this out. Habakkuk 2. Where was it? Where was it? That give his neighbor. Here it is. This is Habakkuk 2 and 15. Woe unto him that giveth his neighbor drink. What's that drink? Did you don't know that drink is philosophy, right? That giveth his neighbor drink, and that's exactly what he's done. And put us that bottle to him, and make his him drunken also, that they may look on their nakedness. Going back to Genesis, and they were naked. How do you know? How did how did they know? What was said to Eve? How do you know you were naked? What was said to Adam? How do you know you were naked? Right? And that's what the devil done. Gave us that bottle. Them philosophies. Going back to the garden. And looked on his on our nakedness, right? Because the devil doesn't get in trouble. Who gets in trouble? Us, right? Even the devil, so even though the devil's gonna be punished, right? At the end of it, but he's just doing what he's supposed to be doing. The man looking on their nakedness. So, same thing happens today. Same thing happens today. Transgenderism. Um, witchcraft. What else, what else, what else, what's it, LGBT, whether it's drug dealing, whether it is whatever, whatever it may be that's wicked, Esau throws that out there and markets it to captivate our people and accuse you before the Heavenly Father and say, see, I've put it out there, but your people, look what they're doing, right, the art of suggestion, right, because Esau, he doesn't need to come to you directly and say do this he puts it out by suggestion marketing so you've got to know the part the power of marketing you do there's a lot of witchcraft beyond marketing you do know that right color codes suggestion what does marketing do with suggestion of thought right that's why people get things and they don't really need it and you ask them well why did you buy that you even got that going on today people buying things they don't need and you ask them, why did it? Well, uh, I don't know. It just it just looked good because they're advertising. You were alert. You were beguiled to buy that thing, but you didn't really need it. But this thing goes deep. It's really, really deep. And I hope this gives you a more greater understanding of the spiritual aspect of things as well, right? That they may look us on their nakedness. So that's what Esau does. He puts out that sin, and you may what? Go off, because that's where in the flesh you would go off. And say, see, look, ain't these your people? Ain't these supposed to be your holy people? Look what he's look what they're doing. That's why he's known as the accuser of that brethren. Okay. This is verse 16. That are filled with shame for glory. Drink thou also. Well, he's just gonna have to drink it up now. We've had to look. We've had to take nothing but else and shame. But that's going to come up on Esau. And let that foreskin be uncovered. Right? And the cup of the Lord's right hand shall be turned unto thee. Everything that we had to experience. You're going to drink of that cup. I forgot what the scripture is. It says he shall drink of the dregs. Right? The dregs is the bottom. You have some wine and you have dregs. That's the bottom residue. That's the most horrible bit. Nobody wants to drink of the dregs. All right, I forgot where that is. He's gonna drink of the dregs, man, and a shameful spewing shall be on their glory. A shameful spewing, right? And we're doing that through what this word, right? On the glory, this is not a glorious kingdom. It was not established on anything that was glorious. It was established on lies, rape, murder, bribery, theft. As it says in John what, 10 and 10, the thief coming not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. That's going back to who? The devil. Right? The devil deals with illusions. Right? 
And even that scripture I was quoting with Genesis 3, Genesis 1, so like a Genesis 2 and 3. Again, a lot of the Masons know about this because they're taught certain parts of the Bible. Right? They're taught certain parts of the Bible. Right? So we've established the trees. We're referring to the nations. The rib was referring to a member of Adam's branch. Right? Okay. Which was a woman. And the serpent is referring to what? A man upon earth, not actual snake. Right? And guess what? This is the thing. This was beautiful. I'm not charging no one. All these breakdowns. A lot of people wouldn't, won't even learn this. They'd be 30 years in the church, 40 years in the church, and they wouldn't, they wouldn't even notice this. Let alone you, how should I be in a dark skinned man? Hope this is edifying. All right. So now we went into that. We might as well go into the scripture upon the wicked as well. Go to Proverbs. Because we've established, all right, yeah, you have a wicked, right, which is Esau, right, but you have our people, yes, Israelites, I'm just looking for this some scripture as well, Israelites, you right, act just like the wicked, just like him, that follow his characteristics, that envy the devil. They see it eat them up with a, I don't know, a German whip or whatever. Or a nice, it doesn't matter. Whatever Esau's got. And they want to be like him. Person. Right. See if I can find it. Um, excuse me just a minute. Is Proverbs 3. This is Proverbs 3 and 31. It says, Envy thou not the oppressor and choose none of his ways. You know, that's very simple, very straight to the point. And guess what a lot of our people do? And you're starting to see that. You're starting to see it on video. Clearly, you got niggas in the truth, right? They want to be just like Esau, right? They don't, they, don't, they don't care about their brother. They're willing to step on their brother. They're willing to sell their brother out just to live like their oppressor. Why? Because they are their father, the devil. Scriptures tell you that envy not the oppressor. And in slavery, if you study anything about slavery, yes, you had a lot of our people, whether it was the so-called natives, even among them natives, Esau would hire other Native Americans, Gadites, to... Keep other Gadites in that condition of captivity. Same with the Negroes. Right? Oh, I love your Massa. Massa, Massa gives me a, a good job. He gives me a bonus. You've got men with that spirit in the truth. All they can speak of is the things of the world. Oh, I need, I need to get to work. But what about the work of the Lord? Because when Yahweh comes back, he ain't going to be concerned with how many hours you put in for the devil. Right? Got a lot of men, they compromise in the mind. But they want to hate on the men that put their all in for you. Have a shy. Envy not the oppressor. And choose none of his ways. You're not supposed to choose his way, And that's what our people end up doing. They end up choosing the ways of the oppressor. And what does that lead to? Self-hate. That's what it leads to. When you love your oppressor, it leads to self-hate. Because who hate, who really hates us? Esau. So you start to act like him. Whether you know it or not. Okay. And these things are becoming more, more manifest with men in the truth. Look at, look at these individuals. And why is it always this time of the year? Winter, when it comes to, um, it approaches, what's it? The Passover, these men turn more demonic. Could these be the same men during the Passover that were against Yahweh Shai? This thing, this thing is spiritual. Why is it always before the Passover and winter these men start having a dark spirit? Because they are of the darkness. They're not the children of the light. What's, look, Israelites were supposed to be children of the light, but you also have those that are children of the darkness, which represents what the wicked. So there's also a separation even within our nation. 
Not all, for our, not all of our nation are going to make it on this side because they have the mindset of the devil. Oh, man. Scriptures tell you don't envy their oppressor. Because when you do that, what is it? What happens? You start envying your brother. Right? You start wanting what Esau wants. But how did he get? How did Esau get the things that he got? You already know. Right? So you will start what following them characteristics. That's why it's so important to read the scriptures. Okay. So I mean this Jude 20, 28. Jude 20, 28 and 54. So that a man of his tender among you, check this out, and very delicate. Because even in the ancient world, there was a certain way, even though you know you had evil houses, the house of Saul, the house of David. There was still a certain way we would deal with each other. So that man that is tender among you and very delicate, his eyes shall be evil towards his brother. The scripture says that. And you see that today. Right? You see it today. Right? He stepped on my shoes, which I, I don't really get that problem because the men of the Lord, we carry ourselves in a different manner we're supposed to. But you know what I'm saying? Oh, he, he stepped at me. He eyeballed me. He stepped on my Jordans. He said this to me. Our people are quick. And I know about this because back in the days there was that culture in London. Just if you look at a man, it was on, on site. Right? And it does go back to the curses. But again, that's because our people, they act just like Esau. Because I'm sure when Esau goes through your neighbourhood, Esau can come through your neighbourhood right dressed in a suit and so forth you won't give him no trouble you won't ask him what's he doing here what are you doing here what are you doing on the block you Esau can do that he can walk through your neighborhood to your block you won't give him no trouble but when it's another jake well, what are you doing around there okay that's that evil eye his eye shall be evil towards his brother and toward the wife even the wife of his bosom and toward the remnant of his children which he shall leave right so a man leaving the household, I'm walking out, that's also the curses. So we can't 100% always blame Esau. Esau, I mean, this is what spirit men are in. Oh, Esau, yes, we know. All right, Esau's just the whipping stick. The devil's just doing what the devil's supposed to be doing. But what are you doing? That's why the scriptures examine thyself, whether that be in the faith. You have individuals that do a million videos. The first two years I came into the truth, I was doing videos on Esau and this, but then you're supposed to grow. It doesn't mean we don't curse our Esau, because yes, he is the devil, but then you're supposed to grow and actually read the Gospels and see, wow, what was Yahawashai going through? What was Paul going through? And not just in the Gospel, what was Jeremiah going through? He had to rebuke kings, priests that were Israelites. He wasn't rebuking no Edomites. Nowhere in the account of Jeremiah did, did it show you him rebuking Edomites. So a lot of people, they've lost it. They, all they can do is uh, Esau. Obadiah. Obadiah won. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. We bring that out. But again, you want to be what? You want to have a full, um, the full scope of this truth. Really understand what this truth is about. Right? Because as much as a man can say, yeah, Esau's a devil. But what are you doing to get right? Yeah, Esau is the devil. But what, what if you're not right yourself? You're going to suffer the same fate as Esau. Right? That's why the scripts are about self examination, which a lot of men don't do. They don't examine themselves. Right? So we went into that and we also go into Psalms, Baba Kasha, 73. Baba Kasha, Baba Kasha. This like this like um a double lesson, right? Like various topics. Truly, the Messiah is good to Israel, even to such as of a clean heart, right? And I've had an individual tell me, um, individual in the truth. None of none of us are pure. None of us are clean in heart. Now speak for yourself. Speak for yourself. The Scripture says He's good to those of such that of a clean heart. So you have those. They have a clean heart. They don't have any guile, deceit within them, right? Also, you've got reprobate men saying that as well. Um, 
uh, uh, you know, uh, but very, but very deceitful. But well, the scriptures do say the heart in Jeremiah seventeen and nine, the heart is very deceitful. But what is for you? What is it for you to do? Self, self examination. Got men telling me, oh well, how do you know if you're sincere? I don't know if I'm sincere. I pray I'm sincere, because you're not examining yourself. And you may be around other men that are not sincere. So you can fall into that trap yourself. But as for me, my feet were almost gone. My steps had well nigh slipped. For I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. So at one point, King David was envious at the, at the foolish. When I saw the prosperity of the wicked. Because even today, we have to see people that are foolish, that don't really have any true wisdom. But they prosper in wickedness. That's how they've attained the things they've attained. By wickedness. Right? To attain, to truly attain, you can attain things in righteousness. This this is the thing. This, this is the thing. That's why a lot of sellouts met people that had to sell their soul. They're angry at those that didn't have to sell. Like me, I didn't have to sell my soul. Anything nice I had, I didn't have to sell my soul. And yeah. The only thing I did that probably did at times give the devil too much time. And that's it. Right? Tempting me, but I didn't have to sell my soul. A lot of men sold their soul. It's like, they were in a worse state. What did you really gain? What did you gain from that? So a lot of people do this within this world. They sell their soul for fame or a few likes. And it's like, well, what did you gain? Right? You only digress. You're still miserable. You don't have to do that to attain good things. You don't have to. Because Solomon didn't do that. And he was he was given more. More on top of what? Righteousness. Okay, Job didn't need to do that. Even though he went through a lot of hell. And he was given what? More. He was given double. It's the devil that wants to convince you that. You need to do this, you need to do that. To get this, to get that. It's a lie. The devil is a liar. This is Psalm 73. And free, for I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. Yes, the wicked are prospering. But they prosper. But that's only for a certain amount of time because we know, going back to Genesis, wickedness and stuff does not prosper. It only leads to sin. And what does sin lead to? Death. So they're only prospering for a little time. For there are no bands in their death, but their strength is firm. So you, you, David had them time where he was seeing the wicked prosper. There's no bands in their death. Right? There's no ending. Why? Because they have something called um, what's it, predecessors, like the Rothschilds. Right? It's called generational wealth. But their strength is firm. Right? And at Edomites, a million, a million pounds is nothing to an Edomite. Even just a lot of Edomites, so-called white people, eight million pounds, uh, ten million pounds. That's chump change to a lot of Edomites. Do you know how much independent, not millionaires, billionaires there is in Russia? Just in the UK itself, in Cheshire, Hertfordshire, um. Even where I'm living now, <laughs> I don't want to give my address. A lot of you know my address anyway. A lot of you hack my um my IP and so forth. But you know how much independent million billionaire um Edomites there is, right? Bro, they spend some Edomites spend what five hundred pounds just just on a dinner a day, and they're not eating the food that we eat. They're not eating the food. They're not going to Morrison's. They're not going to Asda's. They're not going to Tesco's. They have a complete different life. But guess what? You're not supposed to envy that. Because how would they attain it? It wasn't by righteous causes. Right? You really believe, you believe your house is coming back, right? So therefore, you're not going to envy what, what Esau has. Well, maybe when you were in the world, you were doing that. But you, then you get over that. Right? I was doing all that stuff. Oh, look, he's got a Porsche. But when you're really comfortable, you're really comfortable with yourself. You see the Porsche, you see the nice cars. It's like, so what? What does it mean? It don't mean shit. They are not in trouble as other men. Now we're talking about the, the elite families, the Collins, 
the Duponts, the Rockefellers, the Rothschilds, they're not in trouble as other men. Neither are they plagued like other men. Therefore, pride compasses them about as a chain. Violence covers them as a garment. Okay? That violence. And they're violent. Why? Because they, they hire mercenaries to fight their wars. Verse 7, their eyes stand up with fatness. They have more than a heart could wish. So they have enough money. The Rothschilds have enough money. They can buy out. They can buy out lands. It says their eyes stand up with fatness. They have more than a heart could wish. They have their heart's desire. Because we're not talking about millionaires. They, these are trillion, not billionaires, trillionaires. Right? The eyes stand up with fatness. Going back to Michael 2. Right? They covet fills and take them by violence. They, well, yes, they hire what contractors. Right? So this thing is, excuse me, very, very, very real. Very real. Okay. Is there anything else? Is there anything else? They are corrupt. They speak wickedly concerning oppression, but they're the ones causing the oppression. Because in order to rule, there's some type of, you need to have someone that's lower beneath you and someone that's higher. But the thing in our kingdom, we're not going to be like Esau. You've got to understand. But even certain men, they still got a reprobate mind. I'm hearing men say, no, no, Esau, we're going to be oppressing you. Right? But the other nations, once Esau's gone, the other nations, yeah, they're going to be our saving servants, but we're still going to have a certain, what's what they call it? Equity. Is that the word right? What right word we're using? Right? Etiquette. Right? Or whatever you call it. We're still going to have a certain fairness. Even with the other nations. You're still going to be our slaves, but we're going to do things fairly. We're not going to oppress our system. In the kingdom, it doesn't tell you nowhere in the kingdom. In, in, we're going to be oppressing Esau for the a thousand years. He's going to be gone. But then the nations, they're going to follow our ways. And if they don't, that's when they're going to be what? Punished. Right? And when you actually go into that word oppress, it means to keep down. This system is an oppressive system. Right? They speak loftily. They set their mouth against the heavens and their tongue walking throughout all the earth. Okay? Therefore, his people return hip and waters of a full cup are run out to them. And they say, How does the Most High know? Is there any knowledge in the Most High? So these are very proud people. Right? Oh, these are the ungodly who prosper in the world. They increase in riches. The scriptures are giving you a, <coughs> a blueprint of who's prospering in this world. They increase. They got old money. <laughs> I remember telling one of my parents, my father, about Rothschilds. I remember he always says, Yeah, they got their old money. Yeah, it's old money, right? Generational wealth, okay? Which was, what well, it wasn't by hard working. A lot of it was by usury as well. Because what were the bankers known as, right? Shareholders, right? They dealt with stocks. Who were the stocks? You were the stocks. Going back to June 28, you were the stocks, stocks and bonds, right? So with this lesson, I really, really hope this was edifying. I didn't think it would go this way. It was like a double lesson. Lord went in, it was edifying. We went into um Genesis, we went to Eve, we went to the serpent, and all those things. Lord went in, this was edifying. And then to the next time, shut up.